After watching this video, you'll be editing twice as fast. Today, we're covering keybinds, scripts, and some tech that will guarantee faster edits inside of DaVinci Resolve. These methods have cut down my edit time from one day all the way down to one hour. So lock in and let's get into it. Just so you know I'm legit, we're going to put a speedrun timer right here and let's make a new project. All right, so file, new project, I'm gonna name it speedrun. Right here, control shift N, timeline, control shift N again, clips, go here, control N, main edits, control N, wrong. And stop. I know it wasn't that fast. So let's restart the timer and we're gonna do it again with this new script in mind. And we're done. We have the file structure completely made, timeline, clips, overlays, and miscellaneous. And it even opened up file manager right here so we could just drag and drop our clips. I mean, you can compare the times for yourself. I'm pretty sure we know which one is faster here, the scripts. So you might be wondering, how the heck do I do this? So using this cool new doohickey here called the Five Fine D6 Ampli Game Stream Controller, you're able to basically create a macro of long tasks all done with just a click of a button but i highly recommend getting this product right here because it actually saves you a lot of time so that's the first piece of tech that i want to go over there are other softwares out there if you don't have the means to buy the d6 ample game controller but i highly recommend getting the actual stream controller itself just having those buttons on your desk kind of like one of those davinci resolve control panels it definitely gets the job done so for the remainder of the video i'm going to be using this edit as a reference this took me exactly one hour to make while on stream and i'm just going to be going over the methods that made it really really efficient no oh, just place the clips literally the quicker you get to placing the clips and getting into the fusion page the faster this edit is going to be done i get a fusion composition drag it down and i cut it to the beat and then i hold alt and i drag over until you know i want the next clip to happen and then for stuff like this where i want to do like an opacity transition i just hold alt again and drag it up and move this handle right here and that pretty much controls opacity you can even crossfade out like that pretty much you just want to repeat those steps of taking a fusion comp holding alt and if you want to crossfade it put it on a top layer and use these handles crossfading it next extremely amazing tip is keybinds if you're not on my discord server please join my discord server and download the keybinds that i have available so you click on a fusion composition press f if you press F3, it will give you Ikawa Shake Final. If you press F2, it will give you the Hotkey Manager. You want to click on Views, Low, and then New. Then you click whatever key you want and you can bind it to any action inside of this list. You'll find the macros under the Tools tab inside of the Hotkey Manager. So if you go to Tools, scroll down, go to Macros you'll have every single macro right here. So you can get some Ikawa effects. If you don't feel like setting your own keybinds, there is a preset pack of keybinds available on Reactor. Nuke to Fusion gives you some keybinds and configurations for the Fusion page. Most of you guys don't do this, but if you drag towards this dot at the end of the node, it will automatically add a merge node. You do not need to drag in a new merge node and then connected like that that's wasting time same way goes backwards as well another thing that i love doing for efficiency is having a vertical workflow i can just scroll and see all of the nodes here compared to doing it horizontally when it's horizontal you're kind of doing this it's so much better and to activate the word the vertical workflow you go to workspace layout presets fusion presets and left flow and then fusion fusion settings flow and scroll down here to build direction and make sure build direction is on vertical and then next you want to turn up pipe grab distance and link grab distance and you also want to go to user interface and turn up grab distance all the way this will make sure that nodes are way easier to grab and it'll also make sure that splines are way easier to click on all right the next tool for efficiency that i want to go over is the propagate tool this is a script that will allow you to change parameters across multiple nodes and pretty much what that means is if you want to change two values two or more values across multiple nodes all you have to do is highlight them click on the main note that you want to change press i on your keyboard and then the propagate menu will pop up 
if I do live mode, you can see how it's following it. And it also automatically does keyframes. So if I keyframe here and keyframe there and make a nice curve, this transform node also has the same curve in there. So it automatically does all that. So I highly recommend it using the propagate script. So this new method is going to help you with masking in DaVinci Resolve. What you want to do is get a matte control node, then a polygon node, and plug that into the gray input of the matte control. And again, let's put up the speed run timer. I'm going to mask out Gojo and let's see how long it takes. All right, so I did get a little bit lazy and I didn't want to cut out all the hair. Like I was literally getting tired of how long this was taking. I'm going to show the new method, stop the timer. Let's see this again. Now we have a masked out version of Gojo, but I'm pretty sure that was quicker. Uh, assignments, macros, and I have a macro called fast click. Let me click on that. So pretty much what this macro does, every three to four milliseconds, it clicks. And that makes it so I don't need to click every single time I want a point on the polygon mask. I just need to drag my mouse and pretty much it feels like drawing over the image with a line rather than clicking every single time. Now I want to do one more method. Let me get a 3D keyer node. All right. And that's how long that took using the 3D keyer node. So pretty much what you have to do is hold down shift. All you have to do is just draw everywhere else that so you may have to use a garbage mat but the 3d cure is another extremely solid option if you just want to do some quick masking so you want to make sure that you utilize the other methods of keying so if the colors of the subject are really contrasted from the background you can often use 3d cure don't use chroma cure use 3d cure and then go over to the matte finesse tab and turn up post filter and most of the time that'll look pretty good and it doesn't lag at all if you want to take some more things out after that you can just make another matte control node and then just make rough masks around stuff that you don't like all right folks that's all we have for today make sure you purchase the five fine d6 ampli game controller and join the discord server for extra resources davinci resolve editing packs and awesome cool stuff like that all right guys See ya. Clout VFX out.